Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer video. Today we're gonna theory craft a little bit because we haven't really done that in a while and I want to talk about a race and faction which you guys seem to be very interested in. I'm of course referring to the Hobgoblin Carnet and whether or not it could be possible to see them in Total War Warhammer 3 as their own playable faction. So let's not waste any more time and jump right in. So Warhammer 3 is already proven to be quite large when compared to the other two. We're already getting nine legendary lords, and we are aware that we're getting mono god factions. Many of us are hoping for more race packs in Warhammer 3 than there have been for 1 and 2, and that's completely understandable, and as fans, we want this game to last as long as possible. There are only a few army books left officially, so they're gonna have to start making stuff up if this is the case. The fans of the series have been looking towards the Hobgoblin Carnets for a while. They're a faction which is relatively unknown as they never really had an army book or a supplement. Just for a little bit of lore here for those who might not be aware of them, the Hobgoblin Carnet is a faction of greenskins. Hobgoblins themselves are just another part of the greenskin roster in a sense though they do not work together. A subspecies of goblin which has found itself evolving over the years. They're much taller than goblins, more around the size of a man, have got sharper teeth and are generally quite more aggressive, more in line with that of night goblins when you enter their domain. The hobgoblins are also very strange in terms of power, as they're a full goblin faction but were able to form a rather large empire in the eastern steppes of the Warhammer world. This is the very same area where of course chaos is very prominent. Those who know of the eastern steppes will likely relate that to the Kurgan or the Hung. They're in the exact same area and any reference to the Hobgoblin Carnate in lore puts them to be quite a powerful force. For example, the Hobgoblins are known to be in the Silk Road of Grand Café very often and constantly harass all those who travel through there. It's also the case that the Dragon Emperor of Grand Café has to maintain various fortresses there because, well, the Hobgoblins are very large in number. You can liken them to a true horde, so what you can imagine from a greenskin war is more or less what you'd see from Hobgoblins. So far, lore-wise from what we've discussed, they do fit the criteria for a possible race pack. They've got their own culture, they've got their own style, and of course, they've got their own empire. In terms of miniatures, however, the Hobgoblins had a few. They didn't have their own official army book or supplement, as I stated, but they were playable on the tabletop, and you could indeed, if you wanted to for some reason, field a full army of Hobgoblins. This is because a large majority of the Hobgoblins were tied to the Chaos Dwarves, mostly as slaves, so you could have the option of either fielding an army of Chaos Dwarves, an army of Hobgoblins, or a healthy mixture of both. This added much more capabilities to the Chaos Dwarf roster, as of course Hobgoblins are fast, whether they are on foot or mounted atop very fast wolves, and acted as the perfect scout troops or even just some shock troops. So it is very much expected that when a potential Chaos Dwarf DLC comes out, it hasn't been confirmed but we are all very much expecting it, that we will get Hobgoblin troops there. Just hear me out before you jump down to the comments saying that this is still possible. I've of course taken into account that the Warriors of Chaos and the Norskins do share a large portion of their roster, where just basic reskins kinda just makes them different, and okay yeah that could indeed happen, but given the fact that we're going to be travelling up north law wise to go into the realms of Chaos, it doesn't make sense to add in another race pack of potentially four legendary lords just of hobgoblins, that puts a lot of time and effort to make something incredibly unique and add in a bunch of troops with which might not be very good. Remember, it does take time and effort to create a full complete roster. Not only that, but then you need to get four legendary lords, as that's the standard now, get them all special voice acting, special unique skills, and make them all play differently. I think that they could indeed add in the Hobgoblins as a separate faction though, but tied directly to the Chaos Dwarves. Okay, hear me out, this might sound a tad strange, but I think it's the best situation to benefit everyone. So the Chaos Dwarves themselves are expected to be a race pack, whether it's the pre-order incentive or something else we don't know just yet. Now the lands historically known to be under control of the Chaos Dwarves isn't really that large, it's not as big as say for example Lustria or any other 
other nation, this is a very compact area which is quite inhospitable, and it's very rare to have Chaos Dwarves leave their territories, as well, everything else is a potential enemy, and yes, they do do that to get slaves, but it's generally around the area of their territories. I don't really see them adding in four Chaos Dwarf Legendary Lords, there's not that many really to add, and yeah, let's be honest, you don't really need that many. Three would be a perfect number for the Chaos Dwarves, with potential DLC in the future if anything does appear. So why not this as the best situation? Three Legendary Lords for the Chaos Dwarves in the Chaos Dwarf Race Pack, and one Hobgoblin Legendary Lord in the Eastern Steppes. This would mean that the Hobgoblins would be introduced alongside the Chaos Dwarfs, which they would have complete control over, but you could also have a pure sub-faction for the Hobgoblins, where they would only be able to recruit Hobgoblin stuff and perhaps have their own specific units. Not only would this work out quite well, as you're technically getting two race packs for one, but that means that we would actually have a pure and proper sub-faction. A lot of people were disappointed with Aranessa Saltspite, who is a living member of the Vampire Coast. Many people say that she should have had a proper living faction, and yeah, I kinda agree. It's the fact of the matter is that she shouldn't really be running around with loads of undead all over the place. She should have had something unique to her. She had one unit, or was it two? It's been a while since I've actually played her, because I actually only play her with mods. And it was quite disappointing all around, when it's played in vanilla. So this would be a way to introduce proper sub-factions, and it could be done well. If the Chaos Dwarfs have access to, say, around seven, eight, nine units of Hobgoblins, more or less, which I believe was more or less what we had in terms of variants for the tabletop, then those units could easily have some reskins and made exclusively to a Hobgoblin character. It makes sense and it works out rather well. I think that's a way to make everyone happy, because let's be honest, there's not a lot that could be done in the Eastern Steps. I know some people aren't too keen on reskins, but keep in mind that a lot of mods just reskin units that are already available and they are done in such a way that they look like completely new units. I could be wrong here, but I have a feeling that this could be the way to make both Hobgoblin fans and Chaos Dwarf fans happy without making one wait for the other. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below, I'd like to see your opinion regarding this, because I know that the Hobgoblins, for some reason, I honestly don't see the fascination with them, are quite a requested race. I'm honestly not too sure, because... I played against them in the tabletop and they weren't really too special, though I must admit of course I am aware that referencing tabletop a lot when it comes to Total War is a tad counteractive because they're two separate entities. But with that my friends we've come to the end of our video, thank you so much for watching, if you did enjoy the video might I suggest giving the video a like or even subscribing to the channel as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games where you could buy loads of hobby based products, not just Warhammer, for 10 to 25% off. Making a purchase using that link and also our special code which is also in the description supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our Patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to a higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level, honestly we can't thank you all enough. And lastly, a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. Honestly, it's because of you guys that the channel has been growing at such a great pace lately, so we can't thank you all enough. But with that my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very very soon. Have a good day.